Well, here we are back again today. Um, yesterday I had the, the AR going there, and uh, I said I'd probably try and get my 820 going today. The 820 is in the family of the biggest two-cylinder diesel tractor that John Deere ever made. They started out with the Model R, went to the, eight, to the Model 80, then they went to the 820, and then they went to the 830. But during the production of the 820, they made kind of a switch there. The early ones were considered a green dash. They were called green dash. They were the earlier ones, and the later ones were a black dash. The green dash ones were basically a Model 80 with a different paint scheme. It was really what it boiled down to. You know, the 80 was all green, and then they introduced the yellow yellow trim and stuff on the hood. Then through the production, later on in production, they decided to switch over to the black dash, which came with a heavier main bearing, a little bit more horsepower, a couple other smaller features, but basically the black dash tractors were, for lack of better terms, they were just the the early version of the 830. It's There's not a whole lot of difference. The 830 changed the tin a little bit, and other than that, it's it's, a, it's about, the, about the same. The green dash ones had about 67 horse. The black dash had about 74. So I'm gonna probably give her her first fire up here for the, for the season. I don't know if I'll take it out or not, but uh, we'll give her, give her a whirl here in a second. Something else I should mention is these older tractors didn't have electric start on them. The diesels had what they called a cranking engine, a pony motor, a pup motor, starting motor. Depends on where you're at, who you are, what you want to call it. But This one has a little four-cylinder gas engine that sits up in here. It has its own crankcase, so it uses its own engine oil, but it shares the same coolant as the big engine. You start the little engine, let it run for a while, warms up. It starts to heat the coolant. It also has the exhaust is routed through the air intake pipe over here. So when you start cranking the big engine, it sucks warm air in and warms up the cylinder walls of the diesel. And it was a basically the the way of starting them when it was before block heaters and all that fun stuff in the old days. The eight. 30s you could get with um, electric start. There's not a lot of them out there, but they weren't as common as the pony motors were. Um, this tractor, just like the AR, this one has been repainted at some time in its life, so I, I probably will paint it someday, but see what time allows. But put a whole new wiring harness on this one as well. Um, New headlights, new rear light. I put the oval muffler on it instead of the a normal straight muffler on it. I think the oval sounds a little bit nicer. This one has dual hydraulics, PTO, power steering. Um, being it's a black dash, obviously the dash is black. A green dash, it would be green. Um, there's a whole lot more to say about it right now, but I'll... Uh, See if we can get her fired up here and see if we can make some smoke. Now to start these, it's a little bit of a little bit of a process, I guess. It's you do ignition here, it turns on power to the coils and the pony motor. Your choke. You turn your fuel on for the engine. And then here's a throttle for a small engine. You get the engine started and you let it warm up for a while. You pull your decompression lever. And then there's this other lever actually engages the starting motor. There's a ring gear in there and moves it over, moves over onto the ring gear. And you let it crank over for a while. You can lock it down with this flip deal. Once you get it to the point where you think it's warm enough and you don't want to start it, then you just advance your throttle past the first click. Yeah, that's basically the fuel shut off detent. And uh, let go of the compression lever and Hopefully she'll go. So we'll give her a we'll give her a whirl here.
start up too bad, but it smokes a little, so mosquitoes don't like it. Let her warm up here for a little while, and then we'll, we'll get her cranking over and start warming things up a little bit.
Well, thanks to Mother Nature and uh, April showers, I guess they ran into a little bit of rain. So I heard her back and put her in the shed here, but it was kind of fun to get her out and hear it run and smell a little bit of diesel exhaust. It's, these two cylinders have a little bit of a different smell to them. But, no, that's uh, about all there is to say about this one. It's a 1958 model. According to the serial number, it was kind of right in the middle of the middle of 58, and 58 was the last year that they built the 820s. Um, I bought this one, I think this will be, be four years this coming summer now I've had this tractor. Like I say, I put all new wiring harness on it last year. I got that out of uh, Agra Harnesses, I believe they're out of New York great uh, great group of people to work with you call them and tell them what you need and they basically build it they don't have them on the shelf they build them so they're about well, when I got this one I think they're about two weeks out on it but build them all from scratch and they send you a little checklist that has all the all the places every wire is supposed to go to and all the wires are numbered and real uh, real easy to work with and, and like I say I put uh, put new headlights on it Switched it over to the oval exhaust, uh, new steering wheel, new seat cushions, um, all new gauges, and I put in a new tack, uh, red jewel lighter to place that, new, new starter button, new cigarette lighter, new fuel. These tractors, the fuel gauge, the only way to run them is you push the button, it charges it, and then it that's the only way you can check the fuel you have to push that button and then it energizes the system but yeah and I rebuilt the float ride seat on it did that two years ago took it off and did it did it in the winter in the shop there and new light in the back and the PTO runs all the time on it so that's one of the only problems that that's probably gonna be the next the next task on this one is to tear the whole PTO apart and Something. So imagine there's a clutch in there or sticking or something. But there's a bunch of bunch of different clutch in there, clutch pack in there that you tear it all apart and go through that. And we've got a 15 foot woods batwing mower I pulled with it last summer. Mowed a couple highway ditches with it. It was kind of fun. It uh, turned a few heads. Not a lot of people see a guy out on one of these things anymore. But had a good time. It was kind of fun to take her out and cruise around work it a little bit and uh, it's kind of a nice little test for it it'll be I've got a four bottom 666 plow that'll be pulling behind it I'll take it to a few plowing bees someday and uh, I'd like to get a disc or a small chisel plow to play around with it some too so it's uh, all part of part of the fun of owning these things so well I think I'll end her here and uh move on to another tractor here another day so thanks for watching